Hi everyone, welcome back to Visual Scriptures. At the time of posting this video, we are approaching a very special biblical holiday called Passover. It is a feast that commemorates Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. For Jews, Passover is a very joyful and emotional festival, and it is very significant to Christians as well. In this video, we are going to explore the origin and meaning of Passover, how it is celebrated by people all around the world today, and its significance to us today. The name of the festival Passover, or in Hebrew Pesach, comes from the account we read in Exodus 12, in which God freed the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt by sending a plague that killed every firstborn son. The Bible tells us, however, that God passed over the houses of the Israelites who had the blood of a lamb on their doorposts. And that is where the festival gets its name. Those who are familiar with the story would know that this miracle led to the people of Israel being set free from hundreds of years of backbreaking slavery in Egypt. Now Passover commemorates this miracle and God's redemptive nature. In fact, it is a festival that God instructed his people to observe so that they could remember this. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 17, as well as verses 24 to 27, we read God telling his people the following, Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread, because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for generations to come. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you, as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Now, in reading these verses, you might be wondering, wait, what's the festival of unleavened bread? Aren't we talking about Passover? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is easier to understand Passover by understanding the fact that it is actually comprised of two separate occasions. The Passover dinner and a week-long fast from any leavened grain, the festival of unleavened bread. Collectively, these two biblical events are commonly referred to as Passover. Passover, like the festival of Shavuot, which I covered in a separate video, which I do encourage you to watch, and Sukkot, the festival of booths or tabernacles, is one of the three pilgrimage festivals in which the ancient Israelites would travel to the temple in Jerusalem to present their sacrifices. Now, for some, this journey would have taken a very long time. So you can imagine that Israelite families would have planned their whole year around Passover and these other two festivals. For Jews today, Passover is a very special time in which families gather together to commemorate and reflect on God's great deliverance of his chosen people out of slavery in Egypt. It is a very family-focused time in which parents would typically encourage their young ones to actively engage in the festival by partaking in various commemorative activities and encouraging them to ask questions. Now, like I mentioned before, God commanded his people to have no leaven found in their house. Because of this commandment, one of the activities that families get together to partake in is clearing the house of all leavened grain in the lead up to Passover. You might be asking, what is leaven? Well, leaven is a substance like yeast that causes bread to rise. The background to this activity comes from the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. You see, the Israelites had to leave Egypt so quickly that they did not have time to let their bread rise. Remember, they did not buy bread from the shop, they would bake it in their homes. So, in remembrance of this, God's people were commanded to not consume or have any leavened grain in their house during the festival. Now, another central part of Passover is the Seder, which is a commemorative dinner. Seder is the Hebrew word for order 
which refers to a set of scripted activities that are intended to remind the family and participants of God's goodness and graciousness. The Seder involves a number of food, each of which symbolizes a part or multiple parts of the Passover story. The food includes a Passover lamb, which symbolizes the Passover lamb sacrifice, an egg, which represents the circle of life, bitter herbs and lettuce that represent the bitter slavery that Israel was subjected to in Egypt, Haraset, a sweet dark colored paste made of fruits and nuts, which symbolizes both the mortar that Pharaoh forced the slaves to make in Egypt and the sweetness of freedom. And carpers, a green vegetable, often parsley, that represents the flourishing of the Israelites and the coming spring, as Passover typically occurs in spring in the Northern Hemisphere. There is also some matzah, a cracker-like unleavened bread, salt water representing the tears of the Israelites in slavery, and some wine. As Rabbi Jill Jacobs explains, these symbols are meant to make the Passover dinner not only tell us about the Exodus story, but also see, smell, feel, and taste the liberation. The Seder also involves a recital of the Exodus story from a book called the Haggadah. Haggadah being the Hebrew word for telling, so you can think of the Haggadah as a written guide to the Passover Seder, including prayers, blessings and songs and information for how the dinner or Seder is meant to go. You will notice from these traditions that Passover, like many of the other biblical festivals, is meant to remind God's people of his faithfulness and what he has done for them. And it is full of symbolism because of this. Now, what many modern day Christians may not know is that Passover was a very significant event during the New Testament times as well, both in terms of the actual observance of the festival, as well as the symbolism that it conveyed. For instance, in terms of observance of the festival, we read in Luke chapter 22 verses 7 to 8 that, Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And in verse 14 and 15, it states, when that hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly decided to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. You see, the famous Last Supper was actually a Passover Seder. You may recall that Jesus was a Jew and he would have grown up partaking in the various Jewish customs that I had explained earlier. Fun fact, the communion that many Christian denominations now accept as a frequent ritual is derived from the Seder, in which wine was a very important component of the dinner. Now, you will recall that I mentioned that the festival of Passover is full of symbolism to remind God's people of God's goodness. Well, the writers of the New Testament understood this and they took on many of the themes of the Passover in their writings and teachings. For example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we see the Apostle Paul drawing on the themes of unleavened bread and the Passover sacrifice. In verses 6 to 8, the Apostle Paul said, Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see, for New Testament Christians, Reflecting on one's inner being and sinful nature became one of the central components of the festival. Like Jews clearing out their home of any leaven, Christians began to try clean out their lives of any sin as they reflected on God's lamb sacrifice. In terms of Passover today, regardless of whether you are a Jew or a Christian, it is undeniable that the Passover is a very significant occasion. 
The festival reminds us of God's redemptive and loving nature and his overwhelming love for his people. Like with many of the stories from the Bible, we as God's people are able to reflect on the story of Passover and take comfort in the fact that God has put our best interests at heart. If he can part a sea for the Israelites to escape through, he can do the same for you and I. He is an infinitely powerful and loving God, and he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, this Passover season, whether you're a Jew or a Christian, reflect on what God has done not only for you, but his people. Thank him and share his goodness with the people around you and take comfort that he has everything in his hands. As always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found some benefit in it and that you've learnt something new. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this one. As I mentioned before, I have another video that covers the festival of Shavuot and I plan on making more videos in the future covering other festivals from the Bible. I've made a playlist for these videos and that can be found in the description below. Thanks again and until next time, stay safe. Bye.